Welcome everyone to the first Michael's Online Holiday Maker Fest. I don't know about you, but I love the holidays and getting ready for them is all part of the fun. So let me know in the Q&A where you guys are from and let's let everyone get in and settled because we have lots of maker friends joining us. So we're gonna give everyone just a few minutes to get in and then we're gonna start with an introduction of all of our makers today. Great, oh, I see people from East Tennessee. Where else are you guys from? Oregon, Houston, Fort Myers, Tucson, Florida, Seattle. Oh my gosh, it's going so fast, I can't keep up. Los Angeles, Dallas, yes, Texas, Indiana, Georgia, Michigan, Little River, South Carolina, we see you. Mesa, Arizona. Go Sun Devils, <laughs> Napa Valley, Sarasota, Florida. Wow, Kansas City, North Carolina, Austin. Wow, we've got lots of people flooding in with us. So while everybody's getting in, before I introduce everyone, I just wanna start going over a few housekeeping things as you guys are continuing to tell us where you're from. Everyone did enter on mute because we have so many people joining us today. We have disabled chat, but you are able to use the Q&A. So please do to ask us questions and we'll be asking them to our makers today who will be giving us lots of creative and fun answers. This will be recorded. So don't worry if you miss anything, you'll be able to go back on michaels.com slash online classes and see this as early mm -hmm. as Tuesday. So sit back, get in the, holly, in the holiday spirit, and I would like to introduce you to our makers today and let them tell you what you'll be learning to make. So um, first up, we have Anna. Hello. Hey, Anna, so what are you making? Um, I am making, first we will be making um, this, is it up here, this holiday, family ornament of snowmen out of fingerprints. And my um, friend here, our mini maker, Julia, will be helping me make this project. And then I will also be showing you how to make a paint pour ornament. Let's see if you can see. Oh, that looks really cool. Yeah, out of um, paint that is already pre-mixed. Hmm. And we'll go into that in a little bit. That's great. We know that everybody likes to do crafts with their family. So I can't wait to see you and Julia do that. Plus the paint pouring, what a cool trend right now. Everyone's getting into paint pouring. Yes. And what about you, Bernard? What are you gonna show us? Hey guys, so I'm going to start by making this beautiful holiday hoop wreath. Beautiful on your mantle, on your door. And I'm gonna follow up with a nice holiday tablescape. It's going to include a charger, it's going to include a silverware holder as well as a tea light holder. So I can't wait for that. Well, great. All right. Well, I think we're all, everybody's starting to get in and get settled. So why don't we get started? So Bernard, we'll see you in a few minutes. All right. So all right, Anna, good. we'll turn it over to you and Julia. Okay, great. Um, well, Julia and I, again, are going to make this fingerprint family ornament. And it's fun because uh, your kids can help with uh, the stamping of their fingerprints onto the ornament and then make details of people in their family or they can get creative and just make, you know, any kind of fun snowman. So in order to do this, you will need, am I flipping over to the, okay. You will need an ornament and we use the flat disc. You can see it's a disc, but really you can use any ornament that, um, that you want, we have these larger, larger balls or even the smaller ornament balls, any of these work. Yeah. But for the ease of getting the handprint on here, the, the flat disc is what we chose today. And you will need um, paint. These are the Crayola, I'm sorry, Creatology paint pots, but you can use a um, multi-surface works really well or, or any, any family friendly paints. You can, and then we have, Paint brushes in all kinds of sizes. This is an assortment pack that comes with a wide brush that'll help with a 
the painting of the hands and then more detailed ones for the you know small eyes, the face, the, the scarves, anything else that you wanna add to your snowman. And then we will have a um, ribbon to create a hanger. And of course we will need scissors to cut the ribbon. Um, and so that's that's everything that we need to get started. You ready to get started? Okay. Oh, Anna, yes. Just before you get started, mm -hmm. we have a couple questions. Sure. So number one, what if you do not have um, all the materials? Because we have it recorded, right? Can't they just do their shopping this this weekend or next oh. week and do it any time? Absolutely. Yeah. You sure can. You can do that. You can come back and uh, and find this on our uh, Michael's website. And um, you can, uh, but you know, there's also alternative items that you can use. I mean, if you have paint around the house, you can use the paint. I would go with family friendly, especially when you're working with little ones. Um, ornaments, I mean, really it can be on any ornament. It doesn't have to be clear. It doesn't have to be plastic. It doesn't have to be flat. So you can do any kind of ornament. Um, the hangers, I mean, use a Chanel stem from the kids, you know, crafting box. You can use a regular ornament hanger that you have on your tree through other ornaments. Um, paint brushes, really. You can use all kinds of things instead of paintbrushes, especially with this project. If you look up at this here, it's really made of a handprint. It's made of dots and lines. So really, if you don't have paintbrushes lying around. You can use, um, you know, can you you can use a paper towel. You can use your finger to get the the paint onto your little one's fingers. You can use the end of a toothpick yeah. to make the dots. I mean, or a pen or pencil. All kinds of things that you can use um, to make shapes and to to draw lines on on your ornaments. Okay. Well, why don't we go ahead and get started? Okay. And we have some more questions, but I'll ask them as we go along. Sounds good. I'm I'm easy to um to be working and answering at the same time. Great. So I'm gonna leave this uh, kind of finished project here so we can see it. And here is our new ornament. So first, I am going to paint little Miss Julia's hand, and then uh, we have poured a little bit of this paint out onto this paint palette of each color that is in that comes with it and you can see a new color that we have added way over here julia was worried about having an orange for a nose <laughs> so we made it i asked her what colors made orange and what colors make orange red and yellow that's right and we added a little bit more yellow to make this fun orange and then we just mixed it up with a paintbrush and got it all nice and I'm just gonna I'm gonna close this gap here just just in case it gets on there so she's all nice and thick. now remember when you have your hands all nice and painted to be super careful not to touch your clothes or your face or your hair but it is washable so it's not the worst thing in the world if you actually touch something on accident okay Julia go ahead and do your handprint however you want on your ornament okay so she's keeping her hand really still for me I'm gonna set this over here. And I'm just gonna push her fingers in gently into the ornament a little bit just to make sure her impressions look really good. Now I'm gonna hold the ornament and she's gonna lift straight up. Yep. If you move too much, your hands you know jostle your, your imprint. So we don't want to do that. Yeah. So we're gonna take a few minutes and let her clean up with some wet wipes. There you go, Miss yeah. Julia. And then we're also gonna give this a few minutes to dry. Now you can use a hair dryer if you want parents to um, to dry this a little bit faster. Um, we did find that using a heat gun will melt this ornament, so we don't want to do that. Um, so we actually have one that's a, that, that we started a little bit ago that is dry, so we can keep moving along. So we're just going to put this one off to the side here. So what if you don't want to do your full fingers and you just want to do fingerprints sure don't you think that would look cool absolutely yeah. yeah you can you if you don't want to do the whole finger i mean even if you don't want to do the thumb just do the four fingers you can do that you can take just a, your fingerprints and then just make the sections or even if you just want heads you can i mean this is this is your project have fun be creative and do whatever you want to make your um make your little ornament family of snowmen Okay, or cool. reindeer. I mean, make family a reindeer. Make a family of, of whatever that makes that brings holiday to, uh, holiday joy to your life. Great. Great. Okay, Miss Julia. So I'm going to let Miss Julia start to decorate this however she wants. Now this is the way it was done for the example, and she may or may not follow that. <laughs> it is up to her. So she has all of these paint brushes and all these different flat brushes, round brushes, and they're all used for different things. 
Um, and I will clean this one, bigger one, while you're doing that. And I'm happy to entertain any questions that you have. So right now, the only question that we have is, um, someone's asking, like, could they put glitter on it to make it oh, better? Absolutely. Glitter always makes it Yeah, better. we love glitter, don't we, Julia? Yes. Glitter uh, glitter pens, they're, they're like in a little um, tube, and they have the little nozzle at the end. Those are great for decorating these kinds of things. And, and I mean, you can sprinkle glitter on as well, but the pins just make it a little bit easier to target what you want to do. Okay, great. So while your paint is still wet, that's a great time to add glitter. And so spink, just sprinkle the glitter on the wet area. And then a uh, couple of tips on, on uh, glitter. Use it over a paper plate. Paper plates bend and are easy to um, put back in the container or throw away and also keep things in one area. Just a little pro tip there. Also um, a dryer sheet. If you, if you cover this space with dryer sheet before you paint, it will also help contain the glitter from sticking to places you don't want it to stick. Right. Well, Anna, can you hold up the finished one a little closer to the overhead camera? Sure. Someone would like to see a little bit more on the details. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so I'm going to turn it, I'm going to kind of go back and forth because there's a little bit stuff on the side. So this little guy here looks like the middle of his, um, of the, th of the, Pinky finger didn't make the impression all the way through. So it's really cute the way we did this. Um, we have just the head and then we just made the body as if it was there. So that's a great idea. So if you're thinking maybe just thumbprint on the head and you know however you wanna do it. Then we have the, the rest of the snowman here with, uh, you know, it looks like they used red and orange and white and brown and gray. So they mixed a lot of colors. So that's a great thing about these basic colors here is you can mix them to make other colors. So what, Anna, what do you suggest if someone is saying that um, they, that the paint is too watery for them? Is there anything they can do? Can they mix it up more? Well, it's already mixed. So you probably have the consistency that you're gonna get. Um, you can try to, um, try to mix it uh, more and see if that helps. But, um, I mean, to make it thinner, it's easier to just add water. To right. make it thicker, it's a little bit more difficult. But I would say, if you, uh, look at your paint before you get started. And if you feel you want something a little bit thicker, then I would suggest a um, multi-surface paint, much like this guy here. And it is, it is um, mini maker friendly. So it is safe for, it's not as washable. So be super, super careful. And I would recommend uh, wearing an apron when you're doing that. Um, it's not going to stain or anything on your hands, but it may or may not come out of your clothes. Here, Julia, okay. let me move this closer to you. Right. Right. So right. that way, but, it's, it, it, but there's a ton of colors to choose from. They also mix well. If you want more colors, if you want to do the same thing and go with the basics like this that comes in here, which are the white, black, red, yellow, green, and blue. And then you can mix and make orange and gray and pink and all kinds of colors and purple. <laughs> And it's all kinds of fun colors. So anyways, <clears throat> there is that option. All right, Julia, how are you coming? Show us a little bit how you're coming on your ornament. Yeah, show, show your, I'm gonna move Julia over just a little bit more to the center so she can work where it's easier for her to see. And I'll just work over. How does that, how's that? There you go. You see? What are you missing on your snowman? <laughs> I'm missing the faces. I'm actually about to add the faces. All right, awesome. well add the faces for us. Yes. Everybody's waiting to see your faces. It's gonna be so hard. Oh, very good. So hard. To so another little pro tip, if you find a place like uh, up in here where it's harder to get to, <laughs> flip it upside down and work with it upside down. It'll look like a frown, but when you turn it right up, it'll be a smile. Good job. All Those right. Are looking really good. That's okay, uh -oh. that's okay. I just fixed it. It's a big smile. I like it. You can do like if you wanted to, you can turn your thumb sideways and make a pet. It'd be kind of cute little idea. Yeah, just like your dog Dolly, right? Dotty. Dotty, sorry. <laughs> Dotty. <laughs> Got the wrong name of your dog. I do film my dog. I'm gonna move this I back know. now over to our right side since we have a right-handed uh, mini maker here. It looks like milk. It does look like milk, you're right. And it's gonna start to get all nice and muddy. 
muddy colors once we so add are, more. Are those creatology brands? Yes, paints? these are creatology. And um, you so can, they're exclusive to Michaels. Yep, they are definitely exclusive to Michaels. They are, um, we they actually come in two different um, sizes. You can get this six with the basics here, or there is a 12 count also that has some neon bright fun colors to go with it. So either way, depends on what you're looking for. And um, if you want to mix the colors or if you just want to make it a little bit easier on yourself and have them already mixed. Um, but the other colors, the other six colors are a neon bright color, which is still a super fun um, color palette. Um, don't forget to um, post your projects on Make It With Michaels and I'm sorry, hashtag Make It With Michaels and hashtag Michaels Classes. We would love to see how your ornaments have turned out. And while um, Julia is um, finishing, um, we have a couple of questions about what other classes we offer at Michael's. So they can check out all the great holiday and non-holiday classes online at michaels.com slash online classes. We have a lot of classes um, over you know, technology. This specific question is about the silhouette. So um, we have all different kinds of classes for all makers. We also have kids classes. And guess what, Julia? There is going to be a special 24 days of merry making for kids. Yay. Yeah, yes. very cool. So if anyone's looking for holiday crafts for their kids, we'll have classes each day in December. You can check those out at michaels.com slash merry making. Um, a little bit so you're a little bit more nice. so we have a couple more questions there you go. they're saying what about using sharpie markers and or other markers for eyes nose mouth things like that those those are all great ideas i think um paint markers are, are fantastic they come in all kinds of colors you can get them in sets and packs and they have a fine tip a extra fine tip a broad tip a chisel tip um, and the creatology, which is also exclusive to Michaels. But yes, Sharpies do work. However, when you're, when you're using a Sharpie on plastic, it is not necessarily permanent. It can rub off fairly easily. So, um, but paint markers tend to be uh, more permanent and, uh, and, and have that same look that, that, that will match your um, handprint. So I would, I would recommend the paint pens, but yes, markers will work. Great. Hope you wanna you wanna wet wipe. Now the nice thing about this paint is as you're working and it's still wet, it does um, clean up fairly easily with a wet wipe, a baby wipe, uh, both from little hands and from the ornament. Very good. So um, once Julia's finished, we're getting a couple of questions about this. Okay. Once Julia's finished with hers, I would like for you, um, Anna, to show us one more time how you did her handprint. Sure, we can start. do that. Absolutely, okay. we can do that. Yeah, we'll give her a few more minutes to decorate her um, snowman, and then we will we'll, we will go back to the beginning and show you the handprint again. And so, beady eyes. Yes, beady eyes. <laughs> yes. And so we're getting some questions. So Ava, yes, Mod Podge, we love Mod Podge. Yes. So um, what about using Mod Podge to seal that after? Yes, you can. It'll give it a little bit of a cloudy look. Just just be be aware. But yes, you can. Um, Mod Podge is great when you're adding glitter. You can do that. Um, you can. I know I mentioned a little bit ago that using glitter over wet paint. But you can also go back over it later if you decide after it's dried, you're like, oh, I wish I would have done glitter here. You can do it a couple different ways. One, paint over it with Mod Podge, sprinkle it with glitter, shake off the excess glitter and set it aside and let it dry. I would recommend doing one color at a time so they don't mix. But that's just my OCD maybe, that's up to you. Um, and then um, you can also, and um, do like I mentioned earlier, the glue pens, the glitter glue pens. So you can go back over anything with the glitter glue plan, pens. We have, you know, they come in clear, they come in, or, or I guess it's called crystal and it comes, or, you know, tinted colors with the, the, the like green glitter already in or blue or whatever it comes in a, in a set. 
uh, and you can buy them in individual as well if you're looking for just one color you don't have to you know have to get the whole set and um, but there's tubes of glitter glue there's pins of glitter glue you can go a couple different directions different ways but mod podge is a great way to seal it um but it does have a slight little milky kind of um slight milky would finish so someone's asking would you um suggest a spray sealer instead you can do that yeah you can definitely do that a polyurethane would work great um but uh, make sure you do it away from the little ones and outside in a well ventilated area won't take a lot and then maybe something you have in your garage it may be something that um need to pick up but there's all kinds of brands and all of them are really really great mod podge actually has a great spray and both a matte and a um, glossy finish. Uh, and that will keep it, that, that should keep it pretty clear if you if you use the spray and that may be a better option. Great, very good. But a lot of it is, if you're like me, you have Mod Podge lying around <laughs> for all different reasons, because I always say it's not done unless it's glitter. So um, do you really see I do, I love glitter. Sparkle glitter is my oh, favorite so color. So does Julia. It's the favorite color. True, 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 true. <laughs> So um, Ellen has a really great suggestion. She says you could use the glitter pen to have Julia write her name and year on oh. the back of the ornament. Wouldn't that be great afterwards? Yeah. Absolutely. We can take that home, Julia, and do that. Yeah, that's a great idea. After it dries. Yeah, you can do it on the back. You can do it on the front. You can write the family name if you want to across the palm. Um, or or like um, she suggested, on the back is a great way to, to remember the year that this was actually done, especially as our mini makers grow into bigger makers. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So um, before, I think Julie is about finished. Mm -hmm. yes. So before we show that, we have one other really good question here and that's from KK. So are, is there a way that you could fill the ornament with either tinsel or tissue paper? Absolutely. If, yeah, you want to keep with something that's a little bit lightweight. Um, so you can do uh, paper shred. You can do tinsel, as um, she suggested. You can use paper. You can you know, just cut pieces of paper or, or tear pieces of paper and put them in there. You can do glitter. I just wouldn't feel it because glitter kind of weighs a little bit. And what you don't want is your ornament to do this and then glitter fall all over the place. Uh, well, you know, I, would, I wouldn't mind it, but you know. There's others in my family that may not enjoy that. Um, uh, but yes, you can you can definitely fill it. Just make sure that you, I mean, you have another thing, perler beads, super cute inside here. Again, I wouldn't fill it, but just do maybe fill it up to about right here. Super cute, kind of makes, but you can do, there's also um, fake snow you can put in there and there's uh, fake snow comes in an iridescent flakes. It comes in white. So you can get it in a fluffy kind of finish. You can do, do all kinds of different things. So. Um, there's a lot of different options. Great. You can even paint the back if you want to do that. Paint the back in a solid color. Um, you can paint a scene, like a snow scene if you wanted to. Maybe do polka dots of white in the background so it looks like it's snowing behind you. Or glitter snow. Always love that. Um, so those are a couple of uh, other ideas as well. Well, guys, I think I'm done. Awesome. Can you show, can you show your, your, your finished product? All right. Oh, that looks so, so good. Before we show them how to do the handprint again, let's add a hanger to this one so we can set as typically you would set it aside to dry, but we're going to we're going to move the um the 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 process in a couple of different um, directions. So we can we can add the hanger and set him aside. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give Julia these kid safe scissors. Yes. And then she's going to cut and we're just going to ballpark it. We're going to say about eight to 10 inches. And I have no ruler here with me here. I'll hold this for you. So you have both hands. Yeah. First, I'll set him right here so I can kind of He's just so spread small. it out. They are. And um, you want to do a little bit of this up here so we can wrap it around and tie it. So you want about eight to 10 inches. I'm going to pull it tight. Kid scissors sometimes is a little bit difficult when you when you're cutting something like this. So adults, if you need to help with um, some adult scissors, you can definitely do that. Why don't we try that? Let me just, let me try that because these scissors don't want to be <laughs> super cooperative today. So I'm just going to cut, I'm going to cut it at an angle just to give it a little fun flare and yeah. finish. And I'm going to do the other end the same way. And the angles don't have to necessarily go the same direction. You can also do it in a snake, uh, you know, like a fold it in half and cut it in an angle so it has a little like snake tongue look to it. 
I'm going to turn this around so I make sure I don't get any paint messed up. And then all I'm doing is threading one end through here. Now you can do an overhand knot. You can just do a regular old, however you do your knot. I'm going to do an overhand. So I'm going under, so it looks like an underhand. If that's a thing. I may have just made up a whole new knot. Hey, can you add different types of knots? You can. You can do all kinds of things. You can, you can create your hanger any way you want to. This is just probably one of the most basic and simple ways. Yeah. Just add a ribbon and tie it up and then you can put it on your tree. So let's set this guy aside so he can dry. Good job. I'm gonna move it up here close so you can see exactly what I did here. All right, let's move him. We're gonna put him right here and I'm gonna move a couple of these things out of our way. And then you're just gonna show one more time yes. how you did her hands. Yes. Now, it, you know, having the, um, the ornament lid on is not super important at this point when you're making a project. If it makes it easier, um, you can, you know, have an adult pop it off and just set it aside. It's easier to hold and maneuver around and then it, it just slides back on. So we're going to do it this time. We'll do it without. So we'll, we'll show one, one way and then the other. So I'm going to flip her. Are we going to do your right hand, left hand? Uh, this, this hand? Right, right hand. Okay. Very good. Now you can do your ornaments any way you want. And again, it doesn't have to be the whole hand. You can do fingerprints. You can do just the four fingers. You can do anything that you want to do. And so right now I'm just using a paintbrush to paint this, to paint this um, white paint. And, and, and this paint that we are using for the white is the multi-surface. We went ahead and switched over just so we had a little bit uh, more of a solid background color, but the white that comes in the Createology set works fantastic. Just make sure it dries completely before you add details. You want to do your thumb this time or just your four fingers? Just my four fingers. Okay, sounds good to me. Okay, so Julia, if you can see, let me turn your hand over. You can see she is nice and, and painted up. So again, she's gonna be super careful. She doesn't touch anything that she does not want this to stay permanently. Um, and then I'm gonna hand this over to her and she can put her handprints any way she wants. Once she gets them on, she's gonna be super still for me. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna roll her fingers a little bit, just press them in to make sure they're nice and on there. Then I'm gonna hold the ornament down and she's gonna pull straight up. Don't want it to drag. Thank you. Give her a couple of wet wipes so she can get going on getting that cleaned up. And see here she has her, her fingerprints on the ornament. It's a great way to also, even if you wanna just do this for you have a little one, you just wanna preserve their handprints. You can just do, do what we just did here. And then write names and years and all kinds of fun jazz on there. That's great. So before we, so I would like for Julia to show up. Go ahead, Julia, if you can carefully lift up your ornament and it'll be on your forward facing camera. You can show that. And then Julia, Abby has a joke for you. You're what? ready? Did you just say Abby? Abby, yes. What? She says, <laughs> what drink do snowmen not like to drink? Wait. <laughs> hmm. Think about it for a second. What would they like? What do we drink at our holiday parties? I don't know. Hot chocolate? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Hot cocoa, right. You don't Good want to melt a snowman. All right. Well, thank you so much um, for helping Julia. I'm sure that Anna enjoyed your company. I did. She was a great mini maker. All right. So why don't um, we remind everyone that they'll be able to see this at michaels.com slash online classes on Tuesday, the recording. And Julia, why don't you come over with me and let Anna get ready for the paint pour? Because awesome. I'm sure people will be excited to see that. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, we will see Julia again in a little bit when she helps with some other projects. I'm gonna move that chair out of the way. All right, so while Anna is getting ready for the next one, 
Um, oh yeah, that's a great idea, Jessica. I see here that you're saying that this is a great gift for grandparents to have one on one side, one on the other, or to do the two ornaments. That's, that's great. That's a great idea. Yes, it definitely is. I know my, uh, my parents would, my parents would love that for, with their grandkids. Of course, they're my grandkids. Their grandkids are a little bit older now, so it may be a little bit more of a challenge to get them to do it for me. Because <laughs> <laughs> we know these kids, as they get a little bit older, hanging out with mom is not always, thank you. Yeah, that's why it's, it's best to, <laughs> it's best to do it now. That's right. So I'm great. Take, I'm gonna take my rings off because I'm going to put some gloves on for this project, but I will do it in just a little bit. So okay. I'm cool. ready. Great. Why don't you remind everyone what you're making? Yes, I am making um, a paint pour ornament. Um, the the really cool thing about this ornament is you will never make two exactly the same. Even looking at this ornament from this angle, it's got these fun like striations and swirls. You go here, and they're all you know they're they're more horizontal. So, and this is just only one ornament. So it's a very, very fun and cool project that you can do with um, all kinds of um, colors and, uh, and make different, sorry, I'm, can I get a um, disposable cup? This one right over there in that, can, in that cabinet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so we're gonna do two different paint pour, sorry. We're gonna do two, two different paint pour techniques um within one ornament and and I'll, I'll, I'll thank you i'll go a little bit more into detail about that in, when and when we get to that point um but it is a great way to add a fun and a personal you know, handmade um ornament to your to your tree so um i'm ready to get started when you all guys right. are all right so show us what you're going to use anna i will i will i've got i'm going to kind of shift this over a little bit um, first, um, of course, we are going, I'm going to use an ornament. And again, you don't have to use uh, just a, you know, a, a plastic, this works for glass. Um, uh, we're actually going to be doing a paint pour around the outside of the ornament, not on the inside. With glass, you can do both ways. With plastic, it works the best on the outside. You can do the inside, it just gives it a little bit of a um, because of the, 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 the plastic barrier, it does give it, not, it the, the color's not as vibrant, but you can still see it inside and it is still a very, very pretty, uh, pretty finish. But for this, we are going to use this. Round works the best because it, you want it to go around um, on the flat. You can't really get, I mean, you can do it side by, you know, one side at a time um, if you want to do it that way. But for this technique, the round works the best. Um, I'm going to remove the top set of the side just so I can continue with the product here. Okay, then um, we are using the, is it right side? Am I upside down? Which way? Do You're good. Okay, sorry. Um, the fluid art ready to pour. So this paint already has the paint pour medium and the paint mixed for you. So you do not have to do anything with um, ratios. Everything is already ready to go. Now you can, you, you can get the paint pour medium and mix it with your paint also. And the ratios depend on the paint. They depend on the color that you use. So when, you, when you're doing that, just play with it and, and, and come up with the best uh, ratio that, that works for you for the color that you want, to, you want to show on your project. So I'm using it in true red and white. I'm gonna put a little bit of gray in there just to give kind of a, um, a, a neutral element. We may or may not use pink. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do a lot of pink in there because with red and white, it becomes pink. So, um, and then I have an extra white just, just in case because you tend to use a lot more white uh, when you're doing these projects. So always, 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 I recommend you use white in your paint pours. It, it, it helps with separation of colors. Even if you don't want a lot of white in there, I re recommend using at least a little bit. So, um, Anna, I know you covered a couple of different things about the different types of paint, mm -hmm. but we are getting some questions about what if they only have normal paint? Is it best just for them to wait until they're able to get the pouring medium? Um, you know, it, it probably is. That's the one of the better options. I, I feel that 
using a paint medium is is the best it, it, it does so many things to your to your project one of the things that it does is it has it's formulated so the colors don't blend so if you you know yes they will blend a little bit but overall when you put red and white in a in a bowl in the cup and you'll see it in a minute when we when we layer it into this cup it's not going to automatically start mixing together it's going to stay separated and when you're with this technique you're going to move it around and you don't want it to blend a lot so um, you just want it to kind of lay and move as it did here where you have all the different colors if not it's going to start mixing so you really want to use that use that um, formula but there are several different brands i'll be honest there are several and they are all fantastic um, and, and you can see that we have it both in the paint, fine art paint aisles, and in the craft paint aisles made by different, you know, different uh, manufacturers, but they all work great. Um, so, and there's also metallics uh, in the Artist Loft formula, which is, um, a, which is a great, which is a great brand as well. That's exclusive to Michael's. Um, now what I'm going to show you here are these are kind of um, this is more of a tip pro tip uh, is not mandatory in making the project but it sure does help. Um, first I will say protect your protect your um, surface so that part I'm going to say I'm going to make mandatory protect your surface. This is messy. This is a very messy project so you want to keep and you can you can line a cookie sheet that you have you can line uh, you can just use a if you, and like if you have a bigger area, you can line it with a disposable tablecloth. It does not matter, but paint will seep through if you use paper. So I would recommend something like a plastic tablecloth or something like that. Um, line it with foil, use palette paper. You know, any of those things work great. But what we are, but here is our pro tip here. Took a, um, this is from the floral area and it is just a foam block, not super expensive. You can use it over and over when you're doing this. Um, but it is a great tool to keep your ornament still and level. The other kind of little sneaky trick, uh, sneaky trick I'm doing here, are craft sticks. These are the jumbo ones, and I am going to have it. Uh, I'm not going to get to that yet. I'm going to stick them into the foam parallel. I'm going to move it down a little bit, and, and then I'm going to put my ornament in. So that way it does not move when I'm pouring the paint. Because you know, as you know, these things are lightweight. So as you start to put things on this way, it's gonna topple over and we don't want that. So this was kind of my little trick. That's a really <laughs> cool trick. Anna. So you can do three at a time, especially if you're doing um, you know, multiples in the same color scheme um, and you wanna do them, you wanna kind of, I'm gonna say air quote, mass produce. I know three isn't really mass, but it is more than one. So you can knock a couple out and you can probably fit three of this size on here. Um, for the purpose of this video, I'm probably going to just do two. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get push two in here, and I'm just going to keep them separated because I'm not sure if I'm going to do the color, same color scheme both ways. We'll see. We'll see how it how how I feel when we get to the second one after a while because it could change. So I'm do um, a different size. Some first. people are suggesting, you know, if they don't have aluminum foil or they don't oh, have a tray, could they use um, you know trash bags? That yes. sounds like a good surface. Absolutely, anything that will not allow, allow the paint to seep through to your table. So plastic bag. That I mean, those are great. Those are great recycle ideas. Um, you know, when you get home from Michaels from buying all your ornaments and your fantastic paints, use your Michaels bag. Um, that's a great recycled pro tip there. And, so, and again, we're getting a lot of questions on this. So okay. I just want sure. to absolutely say it live again that um, they can use whatever colors they want, yes, right? Absolutely. They can use whatever type of acrylic paint they mm -hmm. want. The main yes. thing is, is that in order for it to flow and not get yucky and kind of soup together mm -hmm. is they have to either already have the pouring medium in there or they have right. to be able to add it separately. Yes, there we have, we have uh, multiple ways to do this, um, to do this. We have, you know, this is not the only formula that is ready pour. We have multiple ready pour formulas within our assortment in both fine art and the craft, craft paint areas in our stores. We also have the paint pour medium separate. So with the, with the ready pour, you know, your colors are already made. So if there's a color that you want to use that is not in there, you can mix and make paints out of craft paint. You can use heavy body fine art paint. You can use soft body fine art paint. 
You can use the you know, Artist Loft acrylic in the tubes. Any of those things work fantastic with the paint pour medium. Uh, if you're going to do that, like I said, play with your ratios. There's no, unfortunately, there's no perfect ratio and different colors react differently when you mix them. So it's hard to say it's five to one or five, to, you know, it just depends on um, the color. So just start, you know, you can always add, can't take out. So start slow um, and you mix it. So you'll, 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 you, you'll need a bunch of disposable cups Pour your paint pour medium in the cup, put a little bit of paint, mix it with a craft stick. You like the color, great, you're done. Not add a little bit more. You can always add a little bit more um, paint pour medium afterwards. If you think, oh, I put too much paint in there, you can, you can, you can work it out. Um, and I think it's a good time to say, based on those questions, that if you don't have the paint to use, don't worry. This has been recorded and um, it will be available. We're recording right now. It'll be available on michaels.com slash online classes by Tuesday morning. So um, you'll be able to watch this. We'll keep it up for the foreseeable future. So you'll be able to get your supplies and do this along with Anna via the video. Yes, absolutely. All right, so they can't wait. Awesome. Well, these um, come with these little um, plastic or foam, I guess, um, uh, protector copper. So make sure you get those out and off of your new bottles. And I believe that's all of them here. I might have it on this new white one here also. And I actually, these, these bottles are great because you can, you don't have to, you can just pop the lid and pour it in. Because I'm used to craft paint, I usually just take the whole top off so you don't have to do it that way. Okay, so we're gonna do two different techniques here. We are gonna pour directly on the ornament and move it around. Then we're also gonna do what's called a dirty pour. Okay, a dirty pour is where you take a disposable cup and you layer your paints on top of each other. You don't wanna mix it, so you don't wanna jostle your cup too much. Um, you're just gonna layer. And what that does, it just keeps help, it keeps the paint from flowing. It helps it flow a little bit more around the, around the round of the ornament. So um, I'm gonna start with one. And I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and have my dirty pour cup ready to go. So, um, and this, the order, you know, like I said, it's always different. So even if you do some exactly the same, it's gonna come out different. And if you can see kind of what I'm doing here, I'm just swirling them in. Can you see that? Let me move this up a little bit so you can kind of see a little bit better this, what I'm doing. And I am mixing. I want more, a little bit more white. So I started with white and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do white in between each layer. Now, that's not, that's not a pro tip necessarily. That's just kind of a personal preference. And it looks a little bit Valentine's-y, but that's all right. I'm gonna add just a hint you of gray. Just multi-purpose. That's it. right. Put it on your Valentine's tree, tree, then put it on your Valentine's tree. Why not? Sounds good to me. Now I probably did a little bit more than I, I'm needing here and I'm not trying to waste paint. I'm just gonna have it a little bit ready for the second one. And, and cause I'm gonna show one completely done and then we'll backtrack and, and do a second one. Does that sound good? Yeah, so okay. how, how did you know how much to put in? I didn't. Okay. I didn't, That's I didn't. Great. I just, you know, you can always add more. Um, I don't like to waste anything. So um, what I, I started with, I guess it's probably about, maybe an inch and a half, um, if I were to measure the outside of the cup, just ballparking, um, how much paint I used in the dirty pour, but I can use it on the second one, or I can always just add more on top of this cup. Okay. So I don't, unless I'm doing different colors for the second one, which I might do, I don't know, we'll see. Um, you can, uh, you know, you can reuse the cup. Now you can also wash it out. It washes out while the paint's wet. Um, you can wash it out fairly easily. Um, and, and use the same cup. So you're not wasting a bunch of disposable cups. So it's another little tip there. Yeah, so um, I think that question is coming too because we have some teachers that have joined us. Awesome. And they think that would be a really great class, um, project to do with their class. Mm -hmm. So they were just curious, like how many ornaments, three inch round ornaments you thought you would be able to get based on what you just did. Um, because the dirty pour is the main purpose of this cup for this technique is to keep the paint flowing. It's not the main part of the project. Now, if I was only doing this, 
I would probably say this is probably one and a half. So it's not, you know, it, it goes, it goes a ways, um, but it, it's just hard to tell. It just depends on how you pour it, how much you pour it. So my, the main technique of this is one paint at a time. So you can really see how much you're using, um, but it does, and, you know, unfortunately it does take a fair amount of paint to cover this. And because we are creating these, these different swirls and things, you have to keep it moving. So there will be some paint that is going to get wasted. Right. Um, but we, you know, we try to minimize that as much as we, as much as we can. The nice thing about this formula specifically is it feels like it's a little bit thicker than some of the others on the market. Now it doesn't mean it's any better or worse. It's, it actually is all of them that I've played with and I've played with several are great formulas. But the thing about this one with ornaments is it tends to be a little bit thicker. So it doesn't move as fast. So you're not having things run completely off. Good. So, so that's, a, that's a good thing with this. Great. Okay. Great. So, so no, I'm only going to stop you one more time. No, you're fine. Because before you get started, mm -hmm. people are just wanting to be reassured that they don't need to wipe it down with alcohol mm -mm. or anything before you pour. Nope. You don't need to do any of that. I mean, you can if you want to. It's not going to hurt anything, but it's not, not, not necessarily required um, because you're not going to see the ornament. Usually you want to clean it with alcohol to get fingerprints or oils and stuff off. Um, but because it's going to be covered with paint, it's not going to, it's not going to hurt at all. You're going to be fine. It'll be fine. Great. And, and before I get started, I was going to just show a couple other color schemes that come in these great packs that you can get. Um, there's all kinds of color scheme that's kind of hard to see there the way I had it. Um, I'm going to flip it upside down so you can see the, see the bottles, the colors. This is, you know, kind of a, it kind of reminds me of a peacock. I'm sure that's not the name of this of this um, set, but uh, Lagoon is what it's called. See, I wasn't even close. Um, but it's a pretty, it's a pretty color. Um, you know, this is a fun, it depends on your color scheme of your tree, if you want, or your Christmas um, decorations, or if this is not a holiday project and you're doing whatever. Um, these colors that they have out here are some by the popular sets and, and they work, and the colors are really, really pretty. There's others, those were just two examples. Um, so you can get sets of them. You can get them in, in these individual bottles that are eight ounces. And, um, and, uh, but anyways, they're, they're all great. I, I, I love, I love the colors. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. Everybody's excited started. and ready. All right. I'm gonna get started. I'm going to start with this guy over here. Um, and, and, and really all I'm going to do is just start adding a little bit of paint. And like, it's, it's, it's kind of like watching, I should say paint dry, but it's like <laughs> paint drip. I'm going to Kind of like those new cool videos that are out <laughs> where you can watch people um scraping paint and yeah. <laughs> spreading paint well no not that funny yeah so i'm just going to um you see i'm just swirling it around and just helping it move a little bit mm, let's see i'm gonna do a little bit here on the top now i'm gonna make a little pro tip it's not a color i'm using here but if you were to use black in your paint pour Use it, even if you want it to show pretty well, use a little bit, a little, little bit, a little bit goes very, very far in the black paint. It's, it's an awesome color to add. I'm gonna use some of my dirty pour here, which you can kind of see, I'm gonna see if I can angle this and kind of show you what it looks like as I'm pouring it. It's kind of cool. Um, and really this right here is to help keep it moving down the side and give it kind of a cool, swirl effect so and i'm going around the outside not just the top so anna on the sample or the example you showed us at the beginning mm -hmm. did you dirty pour that one actually it's exactly what i'm doing now Good. i did both Perfect. actually i feel like i need and the nice thing about this is i kind of feel i can see it a little bit more like oh i need more white or i need a little bit more when you're on a canvas it's a little bit harder to see what it's going to end up with because you could walk away and let it dry overnight and it moves, especially if you're not on a super flat surface, or if you're, you know, of course we know the earth is not flat, so, or is that a controversial? <laughs> so we get kind of a, it's funny because our studio tends to be leaning. I found that out on some of the, some of the canvas projects we've done. We come back on Monday and it's all kinds of cattywonks. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna move it so you can kind of see on the side here how it's, I'm, you, I'm hoping you can see that. Oh, I love Isn't that. And that pretty. And just, I'm just moving it around. And you can see I'm, I'm doing, you know, I'm doing both. I'm moving it. And I'm not just going on the top. 
you don't have to just go from the top, which you know is what you would you know think would happen. Is I'm going the side, I can swirl it. And I, like I said, I did all of this when I did the original one. I'm just gonna. So we're getting. I was gonna try to save this to the end, but we're getting so many questions about it that I think I need to go ahead and sure. ask it. Go for it. So, could you do the same process? to the inside of the ornament. You can, you can. Um, remember that your ornament is plastic and it is a plastic um, sheen on the outside. So it's going to, it's gonna affect your, um, your final finish. And by affect it, I mean, it's just gonna make it a little bit um, matte, if you will, because it's plastic. I'm just going to move it around here. So yeah, I've got a little bit, I don't know if you can see here, I've got a little bit of the ornament. I'm just going to try to move the paint. To, to um, And again, because this paint is a little bit thicker, it takes it a little bit longer, but it will, it will move, continue to move down. Now, if you want to preserve your um, foam block, you can always cover it with um, foil and throw the foil away when you're done. You can cover it with palette paper. I've done both of those things and throw it away. Um, or you can just reuse it when it's got paint on it. It's not the worst the worst thing in the world. If you can continue to use paint, um, if it doesn't bother you to have paint on there, you can continue to do that. Sorry, I'm bending down. So if I'm in the camera, I apologize. So um, people are just wanting to make sure that, you know, you're using the same paint um, when you're pouring out of the bottle, that's the same paint that you used in the cup. Absolutely. Now you can cross if you if you want to. It's you know you want the metallic, and you pull some of the artist loft metallic, and you instead of like this gray, you can do that. It you know it's it's your ornament. It do it the way you want to. However, um, just wanted to let you know, or reassure you that if you cross. Um, brands, it's not going to hurt it. Good. Yeah. Good. And you see, I've got a little bit more, more white on here. I'm losing some red, so I'm going to add some more red. Oh, it's looking so pretty. pretty. What do you guys? What do you guys think of it? And as you're moving it around, it's going to, you know, it changes your swirls and the swirl patterns. Makes some. You can see here. There's some bigger. I know I have this guy. Here. Let me move this for right now. Um, you can see here, like there's a there's a bigger gray spot. And there's some red. Um, you know, flip it upside down. Try something a little bit different because it's it's tight on the um, craft sticks. It's going to hold it in place, but just be super careful because you don't want it to slide off of there. People are really loving this. Isn't Anna. that pretty? What about? And I know we're probably only going to have time to do the one today. Um, are you? What about? Like, talk to us about things we could do to it. Can we add glitter to it? Sure, you can. Okay, so glitter, that's a great, great question. Um, this is how I would recommend, if you were to add glitter, I would do it to an individual color um, because you don't want to mix. No, okay, let me back up. There's two different ways you can do glitter. Let's start with the first one. You want glitter within your color. So let's say you, um, you know, we have glitter formulas out there. Now, side note, you can use a glitter paint with paint pour medium and mix, and that works awesome. Color shift, really cool effects. Um, you can do all of those paints, all the acrylics, glow in the dark. Um, it does mute it. So just remember when you add the color, um, the paint pour medium, it will um, alter the color a little bit, but really it's not a lot. Trust me, it's not a lot. Still, you're still gonna get these bright, vibrant colors that, that, are, that you see here. Um, but so, but if you want it within, um, you want to do paint. Now you could add glitter. You can go in and say, oh, I want a glitter patch here and a glitter patch here, a glitter patch here. You can add foil flakes. You can add anything, you know, iridescent uh, fake snow, all kinds of fun things. Just have fun with it. Um, then, um, but if you want to go with, uh, you want to do a, you want to you buy this and you want to add glitter, get your cup, pour your red in, pour in your glitter. Mix it well with a craft stick and then do what we just did. Pretend that, you know, you can, you know, instead of pouring it from here, you're pouring it from the cup because you mix it with glitter. Um, you don't want to, I mean, it, I would think that you, you may not want to, you know, do your, unless you want to do your whole bottle, pour glitter in, that's great. But, you know, it's not going to get, you're not going to be able to, you don't want to shake it too much because then you're going to get a bunch of air bubbles and you want to do that. So um, if you, if you, if you want to preserve it, you can do that. But what I would recommend is do it in a cup, do as much as you want. 
mix it, pour it. If you need more, add more. That's just how I would recommend. But that's a great, great question. Um, but like I said, you can do it both ways. You can mix it in or you can mix it in here. Um, Deco Art also has a top coat formula. So once this is dry, you can add a top coat formula if you want to. You brush it on um, and then let it dry. I would say at least 24 hours. Right. This guy here is not any kind of anything on top of it. It is just paint. So and it has a it has a matte finish. The top coat at top coat adds a little bit of a glossy finish, and um, but uh, you can also do Mod Podge. You can also spray polyurethane on there. Um, any top coat that's on the market for paint or acrylic paints will work just fine with us. So you answered one of the most frequently asked questions. Okay. Actually, two of them. Mm -hmm. So um, great on the top coat. Um, and then again, to recap, about 24 hours yeah. to dry. I would let this guy dry also for 20, the, the top coat 24 hours, if you're going to go that route, and um, and the ornament. Let it dry completely, let it cure for 24 hours. Um, another cool, cool thing you can do on top is vinyl. You have a Cricut. Um, you have stickers. That's a great you idea. You can add a, you know, you personalize them and put... Um, you know, you have guests coming over and you want a, um, a gift to give for the party, party gift, party favors, put their initials, put their, their name, um, maybe just the year. Keep it simple. You know, you find, find a funny, cheeky saying online and, and, and make, um, make something kind of fun. You can do a picture, any of those things. That's a great, that'll be a great lead into um, the Bernard section too, because I think, I think those would look great as, um, you know, place cards or mm -hmm, absolutely. Put, them, put them on the tablescapes. Now, and I have to ask you this question okay. because we're getting this a lot. Hit me. All right. Why are you using so much paint? Is it just because you want to change the look of it because you love paint and you have so much of it? Why are you using so much paint? Yes, to all of those questions. Actually, mainly it's the look. I, I want to keep um, I, I look at it and I, first of all, want to coverage. You want to make sure you have enough paint to cover everything. So, you know, the first paint that you put on, it spreads and it goes and it evens out. So you want to put more, so I want to put more layers on there to create this. But I was looking at it and I'm like, oh, it looks a little bit pink. So, and trust me, pink is an awesome color. It's one of my favorites. Um, I don't have a problem with that. I just feel like for my tree, um, I wanted more red, a little bit more white. So I was adding a little bit more red. You can do it both ways. Pour it directly on like you saw me doing it. Use your dirty cut pour to keep it moving or put it on there and see what happens. Um, you know, there's there's all kinds of ways to do this and no pour is bad. They all, let I me mean, look at that, how gorgeous that is on the side. Um, and it will dry like that. So I just wanted, I mean, beautiful, wanted more of the red. So I was adding more red, but to keep the red going, I also had to add a little bit of the white. So um, really it's the look the overall look that you want, um, it's um, the colors that you want, the colors that you want to show through. And um, as I mentioned earlier, if I were to do another one the exact same way, it will look different. Every pour is going to look different. This was done, I mean, the layers may have been, um, you know, the order may have been a little bit different since I did this a while ago, but, um, you know, these look totally different. Now, when this dries, it's going to be a lot brighter. Right now it is still wet, so it's uh, so it looks a little bit um, muted or pastelly, but it will be a lot more vibrant like this guy here. Okay, great. All right. So um, basically, um, the tips that you would give in any regular paint pouring would be able to be applied to this as Absolutely. far as um, if they use string, the different string mm -hmm. techniques, yep. all of that. So anything they've seen there. Yep. Um, great. A cool thing to do also, um, that because I also love to make jewelry and I, again, I don't like to waste a lot of stuff. This, your left, what's on your, um, what's on your tray here. Some of these fun little things here, especially if you have this like on a wax paper, this stuff peels up and it makes some beautiful backgrounds under acrylic or under resins. Um, you can, you can attach, you can make a shape and attach it to a canvas. So you kind of have a cool, you know, so, so really, Yes, it looks like it's wasted on here, but you can multi-purpose some of the extra stuff once it dries completely. So it's a very, very cool product. Peels up really easy. And, and like I said, it, it molds and it, you can make some cool things with it too if you wanted to go that direction. Great. So um, if you could show everyone again your finished one. Um, it looks like everybody's loving your project 
and they're yes. excited to to try this on their own. Yes, ma'am. And you know, just to recap, they can use any type of ornament, mm -hmm. glass, plastic, glass or plastic, absolutely, ceramic, okay. wood. You can do all of these things. Um, paper mache. Uh, the the you know, get creative with your um, with your little setup. Like I, like I did with this uh, foam block and craft sticks. It's not super, you know, exciting, but it works great for, oh, it's for what life, it's doing. It's a life changer. Right, Anna. yeah. I mean, but not all ornaments have the opening, not all ornaments, you know, some are flat and that's okay. Put it on a, you know, on a, on a lid, set it on top of a lid and, and let, the mainly you want it to be up off your table. Um, so it can, it can drip off of the ornament, the paint, and not, I mean, you can still peel it up. It's gonna, it won't get stuck. And then you can cut away and then you, you can sand or, or, you know, smooth out the, the edges. But this kind of is easier to do that. So even if you, if your um, material is soft, like a canvas on the back, put push pins in the corners and hold it, you know, so it's just a little bit off the table so it peels off or rolls, runs off the table. So those are just a couple of, uh, you know, more tips, but you know, is, is the, you want to use, you know, always, always, always protect your, protect your surface. It is messy, as you can see. Different brands are messier or not as messy. It just depends on which one you use because some run a little bit faster. Um, but always protect your surface. Keep it on a level area. Uh, and I'm not saying you have to get out of level and figure it out. Just, you know, eyeball it, make sure it's pretty, pretty level. And then um, I use gloves to protect my hands. Um, I would recommend to do that. This stuff washes off easy with some soap and water, um, but be careful. Don't get on your clothes because that might be permanent. Um, but I'm um, trying to think what else. Keep it up off the table so you can run off and let it dry for 24 hours before you try to do anything so you don't flake anything off. And I shouldn't say flake off. That's not a good term. Um, if, you, if it's not completely dry, it'll smear where you're, where you're working. So you want to make sure it's completely dry. So 24 hours is a great, great number. Um, and so, all right, they would like to see the bottom of your finished ornament one more time. The bottom? Yes. Oh, sure. Yep, so they can see it. Oh, let me go closer up. And I'm just gonna, I'll just kind of tilt it in different angles and so you can see all the different, I mean, this was all done at one time. It's got this kind of little, um, looks like there was a, a, what they call a cell. And that's just air. That I, I didn't do anything. I didn't put any um, silicone in this. Um, and it was all just luck. Sometimes those air, like if you shake your, your bottles a little bit and you get some air in there, it, it's not the worst thing. It makes some really cool little um, little designs within your, within your paint pour. All right, well, thank you so much, Anna. You're welcome. Everybody really loved it. So thank you for joining us today. And oh, now, great. And now we're going to, Welcome back up, Bernard. And I believe he's going to have Julia with him for a little bit. I'm going to leave this for you guys. Oh, what, whoops. I'm going to move this. Okay. So right, thank you, in. guys. Welcome in. Mm -hmm. Come in. Hey, guys. Oh. Hey, Julia, how are you today? Yeah. Good. Thank you guys for joining us. We're really excited. The holidays are my favorite time of the year because everybody's just super happy and it's all about family and friends and fun. So I really appreciate you guys coming in today. So today we're going to be making this beautiful holiday hoop wreath. What do you think about it, Julia? It looks beautiful. I think so too. Now, what I love about this is the minimalist style is super in nowadays. So whether your home is more traditional, or modern or transitional like mine, this actually will work perfect in any place. Um, this will go really well in a mantle or a door or even a wall. So I'd actually love to know where you guys plan on putting this. So um, drop a comment and we'd love to hear it. All right. So first things first, um, the supplies. We're going to be using this 10 inch, this 10 inch um, floral hoop. Now, you could use a larger 14 inch hoop, or you could even use an embroidery hoop. Now, this is a pretty large embroidery hoop. 
Um, what I like about embroidery hoops is they actually come, if you're not sure, they actually come with two hoops. So if you wanted to make this with a friend, you totally could. And this is an, actually an example of a wreath using an embroidery hoop. Now, aside from the hoop, we will also be using two stems here. Now you could use really any stem that you'd like, but I love these because they actually come with some pine cones and some berries. So it adds a little bit of texture and the extra touch of class, which I love. Next, we are going to be using the 7 8 inch ribbon. Again, you could use whatever ribbon that you like. Um, you could probably go up to one inch of ribbon, but I do recommend not going above or below 7 8 of an inch um, to an inch, because after that, then it'll just start feeling a little bit of clunky. Now, we do recommend this specific ribbon because it's velvet and it has a nice detail on the edges. And again, that just adds that little touch of class um, and that little extra bit to your project. Um, we'll also be using this super fun DIY embellishment as a car and a tree. I, this one in particular actually lights up. You get it online at michaels.com. Again, you could use any embellishment that you like. If your home is a little bit more traditional, you could find something a little bit more colorful using the red and the greens. Um, if you're more modern, I would stick to something like this. Actually, Julia, I actually have a job for you. So I would actually like for you to paint this however you'd like. There you go. So this would actually be a really great opportunity to craft with your family if you wanted to, and you could have your kids um, paint your DIY ornament for you. Now, aside from these, the, tool, the other tools that you guys will be needing is you'll be needing some twine. You'll also be needing uh, some floral wire, um, as well as scissors and a wire cutter. Now, if you don't have a wire cutter like this handy, um, a lot of bottlenose um, pliers actually have like a small wire cutter at the bottom, so you could do that. Um, and actually in this case, these flor this floral wire is so thin that I could actually use scissors with it if I wanted to. How are you doing over there, Julia? Good. Awesome. All right, so first step, we're going to take the floral hoop, 10 inch hoop and the two stems, okay? Now we're, these are going to go one on either end and you're gonna want to bend the stem to kind of go along with the shape of the hoop. Now, if you're using a something larger like this one, you could use more. So this example in particular has four stems. You, there are also larger stems available if you wanted to do that. So if you have a big hoop, I definitely recommend getting either larger stems or using more stems. So let's take a second and let's remind everyone yes, that just in case they didn't get their supplies beforehand, mm -hmm. that they can go back and watch this video of you um, starting on Tuesday and then craft along that way. Absolutely. You could just go on michaels.com slash classes and you'll be able to find it there. All right. So moving on. First things first is we're actually going to have to attach these two stems to the hoop. Now, if you happen to have tape handy, <laughs> this is my little cheat. So since this hoop is cylindrical, it's going to be difficult to, ha to have your stem stay in place. So what I like to do is I like to use the adhesive of the tape to keep them in place. So I'm gonna start with one. And I am gonna do the other. So what I like to do is I like to kind of um, place it to where the stems kind of meet where the branches um, go off on the other end. It's a nice clean look. And remember in the middle, we're going to be putting a ribbon we're going to be putting a ribbon. So the goal is for the stem, the actual root of the stems, not to show in the final product. I'm gonna attach one and I'm going to attach another. And again, this is just a little cheat for me to keep them in place. Frankly, if you don't have 
any um, floral wire. You could probably use tape. Now, I don't necessarily, if you have floral wire, I would recommend it because it just has that strength. So again, I like to use the adhesive adhesiveness of the tape to keep it in place, but I like to use the strength of the wire to make sure that it stays and doesn't fall off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut a few small pieces, probably about four inches with the wire cutter. So if they don't have floral wire, mm -hmm. you know, could they try to use hot glue? You know, you probably could try to use hot glue. What I would actually do is if you're going to use hot glue, use it with the tape also, because hot glue is good at keeping it there, um, but the tape will just add that little bit of structure and make sure that it doesn't fall off. Great, people are loving this, Bernard. Oh, they thank think, you. Um, Colin says, what a wonderful holiday gift for their friends, family, or neighbors. I agree, I agree. And Catherine said, she's gonna use it to decorate her Zoom background. I love it. Because <laughs> we know we're always on Zoom meetings these days. Yes, ma'am. All right, so I'm just going to be wrapping this wire around the stems. One, let me do a second over here. Just right. as a reminder, if you have questions for us, please put them in the questions and answers. We're unable to um, address the raised hands. So it would be best for you just to type in your questions and yes. we'd be happy to feed them over to Bernard so that we can answer. Them. Absolutely, I would love to hear from you guys. All right, so we're just gonna get our last wire here. Well, what about floral tape? Oh, floral tape will work great. That's a great idea. Yes, thank you for whoever suggested that. All right, so here are the stems attached. Now we're not done because the stems still need to be fluffed to add that volume to your wreath. So I would just go ahead and I would just kind of take some of the stems and just fluff it up however you wish. I would like, I would point some up, a few down to really get a nice volume effect. Ooh, I can kind of see Julia's. Julia. Oh, I love it. That. Can we take a can I take a peek with it? There you go. It's looking pretty great, guys. Well, what do y'all think? Good. <laughs> great job, Julia. And like you said, what a great way to get your um, kid involved with you mm -hmm. um, and make it more of a family project while you're making that. It gives her something to do. Absolutely. All right. So we have it fluffed. So as you can tell, it's, it just has a little bit more volume. It's a little bit more dynamic. So it's, it's definitely a great aesthetic. All right. So next up, we are going to pull in the ribbon. So again, this is seven eighths length. Um, this one, since I'm using a 10 inch hoop, I think it's perfect. If you're using a four inch hoop, it'll work as well. A 14 inch hoop, sorry. This will work as well, as well as one inch. Um, so I'm actually going to keep it on the spool because I'm not exactly sure how much I'm going to be using right now, but I'm gonna show you guys an easy way to make a three hoop ribbon. Uh, let me find an example here. Here's an example of the ribbon, the bow that we're trying to create. All right, notice how it has three hoops on each side and it has two tails. So that's what we're going to be creating today. All right, guys, watch closely. <laughs> so first we're gonna leave plenty of room for the tail. Um, it's, it's a lot better to have too much than too little. You could always cut it off at the end. And once we do that, we're literally just going to be making three hoops around it. Got one. We got two. And so is that wire ribbon? We got three. Yes. Yeah. So this particular ribbon has a thin wire inside of it. So it'll stay kind of where you put it. So I definitely recommend finding a ribbon with some wire some wire over it. So notice how we have three hoops on each side, one, two, three, one, two, and three. All right, so put that together here. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna loop this over once. 
and I'm gonna do it one more time. Like so, perfect. One more. You could probably get away with just two. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to flip it over and I'm actually going to attach a wire back here to keep it in place. So let me go ahead and cut that out real quick. It probably would be smart next if you're doing it um, after this to go ahead and pre-cut these wires. So I'm gonna cut one, I'm actually gonna cut three, four wires and I'm gonna show you guys how I'm going to use these in a second. Now, will it mess you up? Because some people want to see it again. Oh, absolutely. Would it mess you up to show again? Not at before all. Before you do it? Absolutely. They really want to see how big your loops are. Oh, perfect. Is one. Okay, yes. And then just basically just watching you do it a little slower. Absolutely. So before I do it again, notice how um, the, the hoops here on the bow they, they, they actually go the entire length of this exposed stem. And so that's what we want. Make sure that it's not too small so that it's to where it's showing the stems. And honestly, you could go as big as you want. Just remember the hoops that you're making, it's the, the entire length, um, halfway through, that's going to be the size of your bows. So let me go ahead and undo this real quick. All right, so again, we start off with a nice long tail. And then from there, you're literally just making circles, some circles. So again, I'm making them about this length to make sure that they, they cover the entire exposed stem. So we have one hoop. We have two. And lastly, we have three. All right, and to make sure you have three, you could just kind of make sure it's one, two, three there, and one, two, three there. Sometimes I do this and there's three on one side and two on the other, so please make sure to check. Very helpful, Hen. <laughs> All right, so, so. What if the ribbon has a front and a back side? Now, if the ribbon, that's actually a good thing because then you don't really have to worry about what's on the front. You don't have to worry about what's twisting um, twisting it to make sure that the front velvet is always showing. So that's actually not a bad thing. But since we have two, two separate sides, the back and a front, we always want to make sure that we're showing the pretty velvet um, at the front at all times. So we're gonna wrap that once and twice. And I'm gonna go one more time. And here we have a nice bow. All right, so again, now I'm gonna flip it over. And behind here, the wraps that you guys just did, I'm gonna put my finger in there to make sure there's plenty of space. And I'm gonna put a wire right there to kind of keep it all in place for you. So what I'm gonna do though, here's my little four inch wire. I'm going to wrap it and twist it about three times. One, two, and three. And I'm gonna keep this open because I'm going to actually use this part to attach it to the floral hoop. All right. So here's one tail and here is another. Now to keep this in place, I'm actually gonna go ahead and just stick a wire here as well. This wire is pretty, then so you wouldn't really be able to see it. I just wanna make sure that it stays. How's it going, Julia? Oh, <laughs> so is it just easier because the ribbon has wire? You could do it without it, right? It just makes it easier. I'm sorry, can you say that again? Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, does it matter if the ribbon has wire in it? Oh yeah, it's just easier. It does not matter if you could create a bow without a, with a ribbon without a wire, you can totally do that. And in fact, actually, if you really wanted to be an expert, uh, Michael sells um, a product called Bodebra yes. that lets you create professional quality bows pretty easily. So I definitely recommend that. So I learned how to use it last year mm -hmm. and I promise you it's <laughs> changed my life. I love it, that's awesome. So all you're really doing here is you're going to 
fluff out the three sections of your bow on each side. And there you have it, you have a beautiful bow with three levels. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. Each end. So I would do an angle, or if you really wanted to, you could actually do a fun little coattail and fold it in half. And again, cut that angle so you could get something like this if you want. This is actually pretty good for a more traditional home. All right, so now that we have the bow, we have to make sure we have to attach it to the hoop brief. All right, so we have that one piece of wire in the back and we're going to be placing it, wrapping it around the hoop like so. All I'm doing here is twisting it around the hoop. All right, so you see that we have a bow there. All right, now we want to keep the bow in place. So I'm going to use the extra two wires to attach the bow on the back. All right, so you see that there are three kind of legs on each side. I recommend wrapping the wire around the middle, the middle bow and around the hoop reef. Now, don't worry about how this looks. This is the back, nobody's going to be able to see it. And I like to do the middle because then it gives you a little bit of flexibility to kind of fluff up the, the top and the bottom to kind of take up more space. All right, and let me do the next one. So while you're doing that, we have a great question. Yes. So they are so hooked on Anna's um, paint pouring yes. that they said, wouldn't it be a cool idea to paint for the um, embellishment that Julia is working on? Oh kind yeah, that would be amazing. Cool, trendy look. Yes, that's a great idea. All right, so here's your bow. Now we're going to take the velvet ribbon and we're going to make the little hanger piece at the top. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut about a foot and a half of the ribbon and watch closely. I mean, it's pretty easy, but make sure that you hoop it like so, and you're actually going to put it behind the hoop. And then you're gonna take the tails and you're gonna go right through. So you can make the hanger there. There you go, that's beautiful. All right, now to, to finish this off, I'm just going to do two knots at the end. Kind of allow a hoop at the top. And there you go, you have your hanger. And you could use this with a hook or a nail kind of hang your reef. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the tops. I wouldn't make the tails of this too big because we're not really trying to call attention to this area of the hoop. It is a nice embellishment though because it kind of brings the red from the bottom to the top so it makes it very cohesive. But really the main purpose of this is to hang your hoop. So we're actually at a pretty good place now. I hope you guys are all doing great if you guys are following along. Um, how are you, how's it going over there, Julia? Good. Awesome. So once the next part um, is to actually attach the embellishment to the hoop reef. Um, is it ready? Yeah. I'm digging it. Oh, Check it this out, guys. I love it. Good job. job. Can you give me a pound right there? Awesome. Great job. Show her the magic of Oh, yes. Yeah, so, show her. So it actually lights up. I don't know if you guys could see it. Check this out, Julia. Oh, it lights up. So this is a light up truck with a tree on top. How awesome is that? that is now, this is great. Oh, I love the color. It actually goes really well here. So now, if you guys have a more modern home, 
I suggest kind of keeping this, this sleek style of the unfinished wood, but honestly, painting it is great and having fun with your family is even better. So yeah, I, I definitely recommend kind of having a family night and doing this together as, as well. So whatever, whatever works for you guys is great. So to attach this, I'm actually going to be using a glue gun. Now, if you don't have a glue gun, you, frankly, you could probably attach this with wire as well. All right, so I'm just going to lift it up a bit. And I'm going to place some hot glue over on this end and over on this end. Be generous, you can't really go wrong with hot glue. All right, and we're just going to attach it here to the top and just kind of let it sit. Beautiful. And again, you could you could probably use an ornament if you guys wanted to, that would be fun. Um, or if you wanted to um, use kind of uh, something, something different and finished already, um, something with reds and greens would be great if you have more of a traditional home. So here's our hoop wreath. Oh, that looks so good. Good job, so Julia. Good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, people are people really, really love it. So don't worry if you didn't um, pick up the first time on how to make the on how to make the bow mm -hmm. um, because you can go back, you can watch Bernard's um, do it again for you, yes. and you can go to michaels.com forward slash online classes. That looks so great. Yeah, so here are the three examples that we have here. Here's the, here's the two that we just made. And again, here's the example with the hoop wreath. So this one is actually using the exact same stems as the one we just made, just for to kind of fill in the bigger hoop. Right. All right. So, and that's a great point that you just brought up because mm -hmm. we are getting questions on um, what if you want to use a larger hoop? How Absolutely. do you kind of scale your supplies? Absolutely. So here's an example of another larger floral hoop. And again, I would just make sure that your bow, um, you when you create the bow, that the actual loops are bigger if you're making a using a bigger hoop. Um, you could probably even go up to one inch bows instead of seven eighths bows. Um, both work in this example. I actually use seven, the same exact same bow and it still looks pretty great. Um, again, uh, for your stamps, you could maybe use more. This one is using four as opposed to two. And you could also opt for larger stamps like these. So you could tell that these are pretty big. So that can work as well. All right, do you have any other questions? No, everybody's loving it. Awesome. Great job. Thank you so much. And honestly, Julia, you totally made this free. Would you mind hanging on the door for me? Sure, okay. Awesome. All right, thank you, Julia. All right, guys, now we're gonna go straight in to our holiday tablescape. So this tablescape includes this beautiful charger, actually, this beautiful charger, as well as a silverware holder. Let me grab this here. as well as this beautiful tea light holder. All right, let me go ahead and place all these on the top down view so that you guys could see it all together. So I'll place it like that so you guys could see. It's really beautiful together. It's honestly great for any gathering, small or large, you'll definitely impress if you have this waiting for your guests um, during your gatherings. I'd actually love to know what you guys plan to use this for. So please drop a comment and let us know if you're planning to have family over, or even if you're having a virtual get together, it would still be great to show off your DIYs. All right. Oh, that's a great idea. Everybody could kind of like make their own mm -hmm. and have it at their house. And oh, that'd have be a, really cool. A Zoom one, yeah, that'd be cool. Exactly. So we're gonna start with this charger and the supplies for this one are some red chargers, however many you need for your needs. Um, and honestly, you could use red, you could use green, you could use silver, you could use gold, anything works, whatever works for your decor style. Now, aside from that, you're also going to need 
um, white paint. And that is over here. All right, thank you so much. All right, so we're going, the paint that I'm using is Craftsmart white acrylic paint. Um, honestly, any paint will work, but we definitely recommend this Craftsmart paint from Michaels. So those aren't normal plates that you're using, right? What are those called again? No, ma'am. So these are called chargers. Now, they look a lot like plates, um, but you are not supposed to eat off of them. These actually go ben beneath your plates and they kind of almost act like a placemat. They're, they're really good at catching little things when you're eating. And honestly, aesthetically, they just really um, just add that extra class to kind of your table setting. It adds that ex extra oomph. So you'll definitely impress if you have something like this on your table. So did you paint those red or did you buy them red? So we bought them red, yes. Okay. Do they come in other colors and things? Yes, ma'am, you could buy, you could find this in gold and silver and green. You, uh, there's a lot of colors available at michaels.com. Great. Now, aside from the paint, um, we're also going to need to use stencil tape. All right, now, if you don't have stencil tape, um, honestly, any masking tape will do. Painter's tape will work well. I've actually used painter's tape in the past as well. And we also have this, this marking tape. Um, this, honestly, any tape that's super thin like this will work. This one in particular is an eighth of an inch. You could probably uh, go up a quarter of an inch, an eighth to a quarter of an inch for this particular project. All right, and so that's everything that you guys are going to need. Well, actually, before I finish off, you guys will need, you guys will need a brush. or a sponge will work as well, which is actually what we're gonna be using today. All right, so let's first start with a blank plate. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna be making the stencil. So that's pretty cool because normally we have to, we buy our stencils pre-made. So it's actually gonna, you're actually going to be making your own. So you could kind of impress your friends and say, yeah, I did that. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna take this tape and you really only need it to be the length of the bottom level of your charger. So as a tip, find the center of your charger, all right? And then go up and identify the tip of your tree. So we're going to make, be making a tree with a base. Let me show you again here. So we're literally just gonna be putting tape here and here as well. So here's the center, I'm gonna go up and that is going to be the top tip of my tree. All right, how is everybody doing? I hope you guys are doing great. All right, so yeah, let me go ahead and grab. Everybody seems to just be enjoying watching you or Perfect. some people are crafting along with you. I love it. So again, here's make, there's the top of the tree. I'm going to be putting my second piece of tape there. And yeah, you're gonna want to make it as symmetrical as possible. But you know what? If it's not perfect, don't worry about it. That's the magic of Christmas. All right, so this is all I'm gonna use for this tape. Next, I'm going to take the thinner tape and, and mark the bottom of this tree. Now, the reason why I'm using the thinner tape is if you recall, we actually will have a base to this tree. So if you use that really thick one, the base will, will be showing down here instead of up here. So we're going to be using the thinner tape. So I think I know the answer to this. Yes, ma'am. But I just wanna make sure. What if you don't wanna do a tree? Do you have to do a tree? No, not at all. Honestly, um, you can make anything. You can make, you could put a leaf on here. You could put Santa on here, even if you wanted to. And I know Thanksgiving is coming up. Yes. And so if you wanted to make a leaf, if you wanted to put a pumpkin on say a green or a brown or a gold charger, you could totally do that for Thanksgiving. And you know, if you wanted to get some ready-made stencils, we, I do know that we sell some leaf stencils at michaels.com. All right, so now that we have that, I'm gonna take this again and I am just going to add a little box down here for the base of the tree. I'm gonna cut it so I could get a, th a clean line because we have the thin marking tape there. 
that we don't want to go over. Make sure that your tape does not go over this so that it's not shown whenever you're painting. So there's one. There's two. And lastly, here is the bottom of the tree. All right, so there you have the general shape. Now we're gonna do one more thing. It's not a tree without garlands. So we're going to be putting some thin stripes, three thin stripes across the tree. As you can see here. And that represents garlands. So how many people have already put up their Christmas tree? I wanna know, let us know because I have. I knew you were. <laughs> Judging by your outfit today, yes. it looks like you're already <laughs> in the holiday spirit. I am on the camp of Christmas starts in November. Now, I'm not saying Thanksgiving is not important, but again, the holidays is just my favorite. And so that's, I like to put out the Christmas decorations right away. Yeah, so I'm the more traditional, <laughs> wait till midnight on Thanksgiving night. <laughs> and mine comes down the day after Christmas. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. You know what, I, the way that I think of it is you put so much love and work into Christmas decorations. Why not have it up for almost two months instead of yes. one? And <laughs> there are people that are in your camp. I love they it, same. <laughs> I know that's very con contentious, almost contentious, almost like pineapple on pizza. So, <laughs> so um, someone brought up what a great idea to do Hanukkah gifts and do the Star of David. I think that's an excellent idea. I agree. And you could use a blue or silver plate for that as well. All right. So now I'm going to take the, the foam brush and I'm going to take some white paint. And you're literally just going to be dabbing that paint onto the plate, like so. so. Remind them what kind of paint you're using. Absolutely. This is white Craft Smart paint from Michaels.com. Great. Now, what if they don't have white? They don't like white they would rather use a different color. Honestly, you could use any color you want. Just make sure that there's enough contrast um, with the color, between the color that you choose and the color of your charger. For instance, if I were to use white paint on a silver charger, you could, you'll probably barely see it. So you'd probably opt for something like green paint instead. So you have a fan. Isabella is in your camp. I love it. On, <laughs> especially on the pineapple on her pizza. Oh, I love pineapple on pizza. I'm Filipino and that's actually a staple for our pizzas. So I absolutely love it. All right. Now, whenever you're putting paint on there, don't worry about full coverage. It's fine. Honestly, I think the texture ac actually adds a nice touch to it. All right. Yeah. You guys are doing great. And again, if they don't have the supplies for this and mm -hmm. they wanna get the supplies later, they're just enjoying getting in the holiday spirit and watching you today. This will it. be available for them to watch on michaels.com slash online classes. Yes, ma'am. Please, please <laughs> You've got a lot out. of people now siding with you. Yeah. <laughs> you win. I love it. And I will say, I did know that about you, that you put your tree up. Yes. <laughs> I did get some comments from my friends. It's Thanksgiving. But you know what? There's nothing wrong with doing both at the same time. I'm actually having Thanksgiving at my house this year. And yes, there will be Christmas decorations. Up. <laughs> All right. So I, I, I filled in the tree. And I'm going to let it set for a little bit and do the next part of, um, of this charger. So all you have to do is flip it over and you're gonna be using the tip of this to add snow to your tree. So here's what it's going to look like. And you're gonna use this to put snow. Um, you could, honestly, you could use anything that kind of has a flat circle shape like this. Um, you could use um, the eraser of a pencil that actually works really well. So if you don't want to put tape on your foam pouncer, then you could do that. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some white, grab some white paint, and I'm just going to place that randomly. So 
Or they're even helping you by renaming On the it. plate. Thanks, miss. I love that. <laughs> now I have something to say when somebody complains about my Christmas decorations. It's my thanks, miss decorations. And someone, um, Jessica has a great suggestion. Again, you could use your um, cutting machine mm -hmm. and cut out a stencil Absolutely. if you wanted to do something. Cricut would be great for that. I love using my Cricut. Now, when you guys are putting these, I, I like to make sure that they're spaced out evenly. You get a nice look and put that there. I'll put one here. So what if what if someone wanted to add glitter? When should they do that? Should they do that now while it's, while it's drying? So I think, yes, um, while it's wet, now would be a great time to add glitter. Now, you can really wash this as is. So if you get some dishwasher safe Mod Podge and coat it, you totally can. So you would add the glitter on now. And then once we're all done, that's when you would use the dishwasher safe clear Mod Podge to kind of, to protect it and make it dish um, washer safe. Can you remind everyone what the final project looks like one more time? Absolutely. Here it is. And you guys are actually about to get a view of the final project in the next few seconds. So now it's time to go ahead and remove the tape to reveal your work. <laughs> wow, you didn't let that dry very long. Is that kind of the normal? It's you know, real easy and quick to lift? Yes, ma'am. So something that I learned in painting, in painting interiors is that the best time to actually remove the tape is when it's still drying so that the lines are nice and crisp. Because if you think about it, if the tape is, is, I mean, if the paint is already dry, it can flake. And so if, if it's dry and you remove it, there's a possibility of it flaking and your lines not being completely straight. Wow, your lines look good. Thank you. I love how easy that tape comes off. Absolutely, me too. All right, so we actually have a half snowball here, so I'm gonna fix that. and you let this dry, and then you're good to go. Here it is one more time. That's great. Thank you. And again, if you're doing this for Thanksgiving, you could grab, you could grab a green charger, you could grab a gold one. We also sell some brown ones at michaels.com. And you could, again, you could use a stencil with your Cricut or buy it online as well and make some fun Thanksgiving charges too for Thanksgiving. All right, so what else are you going to make for your place setting? All right, so next up, I'm going to put this away. And next, we're going to be making this beautiful tea light holder with a mason jar. I'm going to go ahead and put this away. Now, I love this because honestly, not a lot of people think about making something like this for their tablescape, you know, like it's just a bunch of mason jars on your table with votive lights in it, you know, but honestly, it just adds so much to the ambiance of your dinner that it's totally worth it. Again, it just kind of uh, steps up your, your, um, your table setting uh, to really impress your friends and family as well. All right, and again, this actually, the, the light in there actually does light up too. All right, so for supplies for this, you're going to be needing one mason jar, you're going to be needing um, this velvet ribbon. I believe this is an eighth of an inch. Oh, I lied, this is three eighths of an inch. This is actually the perfect length, the perfect width for this particular um, mason jar because we're actually going to be wrapping it. Uh, I see we got some white in there. So let me go ahead and wipe both my fingers. <laughs> That's what happens when you're Exactly, when you're right? <laughs> You would Sometimes think that I was messy. finger painting during this. <laughs> All right, let me get this here as well. Perfect. Did you know that that cleans up nicely? Yes. <laughs> All right, now, if you want to, before you start, you could wash this. Honestly, same thing that goes with the charger. It's not necessarily wash it, just make sure that you wipe it and, and it's nice and clean before you start. Um, and I recommend that for this mason jar as well. So first step is pretty easy. You're just going to remove the top, Let's go ahead and remove this as well. Gonna remove the top. And you're gonna remove the lid 
and place it to the side. Now I would save your lids so that whenever you store this and use it for next year, you could just close it back right up because we, if you, you'll see we are actually gonna put a lot of embellishments inside. You do not want that falling off when you're storing it. That's a great idea. Yes, ma'am. So put that to the side, save it, do not lose these. I made that mistake. <laughs> All right, now with the extra lid without a top on it, we're just gonna place it on the mason jar like so. See, we still have some white on here. Let's remove that. Perfect. All right, so the first step is you're going to be adding ribbon around the base of this mason jar lid. Let me go ahead, take this. Now you could get the length prior to cutting it. And I would actually overlap it just a tad because you don't really want any silver showing. So all you, all you have to do to get this attached is put a dot of glue on one end. And just to make sure that it's secure, and you know, sometimes people might say just put one on each end, but look, you could still do this, right? You don't really want that to happen. So I am going to put two more dots, one here, one here. So I'm horrible at this. <laughs> I should be able to answer this without asking. And you. I'm gonna put one right here. But it's not an eight ounce mason jar or a 16 ounce mason jar? You know, I believe this looks like, this is an eight ounce mason, uh, mason jar. Okay. Yes, ma'am. For this, for those of you know, who don't know, eight ounces is one cup. So that, that sounds about right. Thanks for educating. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so we have it wrapped and that was pretty easy there. We just use our hot glue gun. Be careful, don't, don't touch the tip on your finger because it is hot. All right, so the next step that we're going to do is we're actually going to take our pick. And you know what, I forgot to actually show you the picks. So these are the picks that we're gonna be using for this project. Um, again, you could use any pick that you'd like, but this pick in particular is really nice because it's nice and it's the perfect size, first of all. And this single pick comes with pine cones, it comes with berries, and it even comes with an apple. And we're actually going to be uh, trimming this pick and taking it apart and gluing it onto this like so. So one pick, you could actually make two mason jars with a single of these picks. That's what we're gonna be doing today. All right, wow, so. That's a great way to kind of save money. Absolutely. When you're, when you're planning your table Absolutely. Scape. So, you know, a lot of times some people might just say, oh, you know what, the pick works like this. And honestly, it kind of does. It's If you want your mason jar to be really big and really wild, you could just stick the pick full like this and not trim it. But I think, you know, I think that is a little bit, a little bit much. I know people like the bigger, the better. <laughs> so I am going to trim it and attach it with hot glue. So what, I'm gonna first grab one of these leaves. I'm using scissors. Honestly, you could use wire cutters as well. Um, but for these, scissors work just fine. I'm going to grab two leaves here. Let's see, what else do we have here? Oh, uh, this, this one is beautiful because I like the white on it. It's a nice contrast to those leaves. And the green is also a little bit lighter. So again, it's a nice contrast. We have to grab some berries for sure. So let's go ahead and cut that. I love the way you can cut that just with the scissors. Yes, I do too. It makes it so much easier. I can never find my floral. <laughs> right? <laughs> so here I am going to grab, actually the apple is actually pretty thick. Actually, no, it's not. There you go. I had a piece of metal in the way. Perfect. So we have an apple. We have some pine cones. And I'm going to take a few of these green branches as well to finish it off for us. So it looks like the green branches are actually attached with a thicker wire. Oh. So good thing we have a wire. Candace, 
wire cutters handy. All right, see, that was easy. And again, look at all this we have left. You could totally make a second one just with this. All right, so here's an example if you guys wanna look. You guys could see it there. I'm going to be recreating something similar to this. So first I'm gonna take the two leaves and I'm just gonna hot glue it. So do you guys remember the seam of when where we hot glued it there? I would definitely put the leaves there so that it covers that and it just, one continuous stream and you cannot see the ends. So all you really need to do to attach this is just a drop of glue. There you go. And here is another one. So notice how I'm angling this one, uh, these leaves down and kind of horizontal, just kind of adds that extra flair. Notice we did the same thing here. If we put everything in the top, then there won't really be much to look at down here. All right, so next we're going to be adding some greenery. I'm just gonna put a ton of hot glue because it definitely doesn't hurt. There's that. Put some green here. I'm gonna hold it for a second. Make sure it sticks. All right. So now I'm going to be placing. Actually, let me do the apple next. So I want to highlight the apple because this is, I mean, it's a tiny apple. How cool is that? So I'm going to put that here in the center. All right. Hold it in just for a second. It's great about hot glue is it dries super quickly. And so I noticed that, you know, Lisa Put is asking theory. a question about how you're adding the picks to the lid top. Yes, um, ma'am. But you're just doing it to the top, right? Yes, exactly. So I'm adding the picks to, it's literally just being attached to the lid. So everything that I'm gluing is only around the lid area and not necessarily on the glass itself. If you were to do that, that's fine. But with hot glue, um, the, the velvet and the ribbon kind of helps um, ad for adhesive purposes. So it's, um, it totally works fine on the glass too, but I like to put it all on the top. All right. So let me go ahead and do the final piece here. These pine cones. Oh, these little pine cones are so cute. <laughs> I can't wait to see what you're going to put inside of it. Me too. <laughs> All right. So here is the finished product. Again, here's the example. Let me show you guys the wreath. I mean, sorry, the pick one more time. So here's the pick. Definitely, I recommend looking for this particular pick on michaels.com or in store. Um, this Because this one in particular has the pine cones, has the berries, the different colored greens has an apple. I mean, come on, it's a tiny apple. How cute is that? So I definitely recommend you finding uh, this particular pick too, if it's your style. All right, now the last step or close to the last step is you're gonna take your, you're gonna get your glitter. Here is my Creatology glitter. And I really like that glitter. It's really, it's- I love it. Pieces. It has, yes. It, I. I definitely recommend using uh, glitter with bigger pieces like this so that you don't have a bunch of little glitter um, around everywhere. And honestly, for this particular project, it just really adds that extra oomph. Um, this particular has like a nice iridescent effect too. So I'm just gonna put some glitter there. Put some glitter here. Um, if you wanted to, you could totally use something. You could probably use marbles, you could use moss. Um, moss would be really fun too, if you have like a really natural and green look for your home. I like the glitter myself because it adds some shine to this very natural looking tablescape. All right, and the last and final step is you are taking your battery powered tea light. I'm gonna turn it on for you guys and you're just dropping it in there like so. Um, if you want, if an easier way to drop it in there, if you wanted to, is you could use tongs to put it in there. And so here is the finished product. Oh, I love it. 
That would look so great. Now, I know we only have a little bit of time left, but I think that we should still show them for anyone that wants to stick around with us. Absolutely. I think we should still show them this really cool um, place card that you have. And you know what? I'm gonna I'm 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 going to speed through it. I'm still going to explain it well. But this this project I saved the easiest for last. So bear with me here. And if, yeah, if you have time to stay online, please do. So the last piece is you're gonna make, we're gonna make this super fun silverware holder. Uh, my favorite part about this is the middle because you could put someone's name on it and really personalize it. Or it could be fun and put something like Santa on there or just a fun heartfelt message. Now for this project, we're going to need some Craytology felt wreaths. These come in a 12 pack, so you have plenty to make for your tablescape. You also, again, need this 3 8 of an inch ribbon. Again, I love the velvet texture because velvet is just so fancy, you know? And so if you're gonna buy a ribbon, might as well look fancy. You also need some paper. So here's my paper here. You could use cardstock, you could use printer paper, but I do recommend something that's a little bit more substantial like cardstock so that it's easier to kind of move around. Now, in this one, I have pre-drawn a circle here. You guys could actually use the ribbon, the ribbon that we use for the wreath for this circle. And I'll be showing you guys that in a second. For this project, you will also need some scissors. And again, a hot glue gun. Oh, we got some there. All right, so first things first, we're going to make our bow. So we're gonna make a tiny bow with this ribbon here. I would just cut a small piece. Again, too much is better than too little because if you have too little, then you're gonna to have to start over. And just like your shoelaces, I'd make two bunny loops, tie it around and over. Perfect. And tighten like so. You have a nice little bow. And try your best to make sure that both sides are pretty even and tight so that it stays put. All right, so here's our bow. And this is actually gonna go on the top of our silverware. So let me go ahead and glue that on. Oh, perfect. <laughs> I'm just about to run out of glue, but no need, no matter. <laughs> oh, you planned that. Exactly. All right. Hold that on for a second. There's that. Now the next step is you're going, we're going to be making these slits that the silverware go. So to do that, all you have to do is fold that over. And you're gonna cut with scissors all the way to the edge, but don't make sure you don't go all the way. All right, and you're gonna do the same thing with the other side. Oh, notice how my slits here. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Oh no, notice how I cut all the way through. Let me go ahead and grab another one real quick. This is why it's great that these come in packs of 12. So. Pro tip, you may want to get more than you need just in case you do this here. I always. <laughs> so let me go ahead and grab this same ribbon from this one. You know what? This hot glue is so strong. I'm just going to make another one real quick. Here are the two hoops. two hoops, and there you go. So while you're doing that, Perfect. so if someone doesn't want to do wreaths, they could buy their own felt. Absolutely. And they could. You, could. you could do Christmas trees. You can make your own little Santa. And again, if you're doing this for Thanksgiving, you could totally uh, make your own leaves or something like that, or pumpkins. Um, for your silverware holder. So now let me go ahead and quickly 
cut these. All right, and I'm gonna do the same thing on this end. Perfect. So we have this pre-done. Um, we have this um, these circles pre-done. Again, I use this because it actually happens to be the perfect size for this. You could probably find anything with a with a circle shape um, that works for you. So let me go ahead and grab a marker and do the shape. And again, you're going to be cutting it. So any marks that you have out here is totally fine. All right. And all you're just going to be putting is either a name or a fun little message. And I think this is a great time to tell everybody about our um, brush lettering classes oh, that yes. we have at Michael's. We have a fun one, a beginner brush lettering class coming up this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. So if you'd like to sign up, we still have some spots open at michaels.com forward slash online classes. Oh, that but, sounds like fun. Yeah, judging from my handwriting, I need to take that class. Honestly, before. I think I may need to too. <laughs> so you could find me at the brush lettering classes. Make sure you say hello. <laughs> yeah, Grace is a wonderful teacher. You'll enjoy it. Awesome, I would definitely be there as a maker and in the audience. So I cut out our Julia and all you really need to do is put a little bit of glue on the four corners to stick it on here and you'll be good to go. All right, let me go ahead. We have these plastic spoons and forks so you could totally do this with plastic too. I'm just gonna attach it Go ahead and attach it here. All right. See, you can even make plastic silverware. Exactly. Exactly. This is a great way if, if honestly, if you're using a paper plate, plastic silverware, because it's convenient, I honestly do sometimes too. This is a great way to kind of step it up for your tablescape. So before we finish, let me go ahead and show what we just made all together here. And here is your tablescape. That's awesome. Yes, Thank you. So I was going to invite um, Anna and Julia back up too. Come on so over, guys. Can, so they can share with us what they've made. Mm -hmm. So come on in. Now remember, when you guys do make something, we'd love to see it. So post your projects online and use the hashtags make it with Michaels and hashtag Michael's classes. Okay, so sh show up your ornament. Show your ornament, Julia. Great job. Good job. Yeah. There you go. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> so we really appreciate everyone joining us today. And just as a reminder, this will be recorded and it will be available on Tuesday. So if you're looking for any great holiday online classes, you can go to michaels.com online classes. And also if you're looking for holiday crafts for your kids, we have classes each day in December. So check out michaels.com merry making. All right, so thank you everyone. Thank you. Thanks guys. I hope you guys have a great holiday. Have a great holiday. All right, bye y'all.